Hello everybody, my name is Stefan Kraus from By the Bytes and welcome back to the second tutorial video of the uh, beta, the standalone of World Creator 2. And in this tutorial video I would like to show you the filters, the terrain filters of World Creator that I use to transform uh, terrain into something totally different and with, with which you can create completely different uh, kind of terrain types. And, and I also will give you a very quick and short introduction on how to use the areas in combination with the filters. But there will be another video uh, dedicated for the areas only showing all the features of the areas as well. Okay, so let's start with the filters right now. Um, let's quickly click here on the filters. You can see there is an add layer button. Well, Web Creator organizes the filters inside the layers and not only the filters but also the textures and the objects and the details um, and those layers can have multiple filters multiple objects multiple textures and they can be reordered inside the layer and you can also have of course multiple layers that can also be reordered and combined together so um, let's add a layer first so now i've added a layer you don't see anything uh, specific here so this is a virtual uh, so virtual layer here, you can uh, disable layer, enable a layer, you can reorder a layer if you have multiple layers applied. You can delete the layer by clicking twice on this button here. You can also rename a layer and you can apply an area to your layer, which uh, I'm going to go shortly uh, show you how, how this works. But for now, I would like to add a filter and show you how filters do work. So please um, remember this shape right now here. I'm going to click the add button and I'm going to select the erosion fluvial filter here. So you can see on these images before and after what this filter is going to do. It adds some kind of fluvial erosion over the terrain. Watch this terrain here. Clicking OK. The filter has been applied and you should see the difference. I'm going to disable it without and with. So now what we can do here um, I can disable, enable a filter, I can change a filter, I also can remove a filter by clicking this button twice as well. The next thing that you see here um, are the filter specific settings. Each filter has its own settings. Um, so we have, for example, for this one we have a general strength, strength modifier, length and so on. We have many, many sliders to control the uh, erosion for the owl. Uh, calculation over this terrain. For example, we could increase the strength, we could reduce the strength modifier giving you different results. You can see it here, just to remember this is without, this is with, giving you a bunch of controls over all these nice settings. So um, also the precision here, with, with uh, which precision it should be applied and calculated, giving you really pretty and awesome results. And um, yeah, just let me quickly uh, mention something. So we're doing this here in real time. This is actually something quite unique, um, especially when we go for uh, larger terrain maps. Wave Crane is uh, supporting all the filters. Everything we do here is entirely done in real time. Everything is real time inside Wave Creator, even the erosion filters, um, even for large, ultra, ultra large uh, resolution maps. Okay, so the next thing here you could do is to apply a filter depending um, on the height range or the slope range. So it's not only two dimensional over the entire terrain or only a specific portion on the terrain in, 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 a, in a two dimensional manner. But you also can apply this filter in three dimensions. Let me show you um, how to do this. Um, let's select the height range here. Actually, this filter is now um, applied between negative 500 and positive 500 meters. Let's change it to 200. Now you can see that the filter only goes until these parts here. Everything above this here is not being recognized by the filter. You can see it also if you activate the heat maps here. All those red parts are taken fully into account when applying this filter, anything else not. And if you move the slider down, you can see how it affects the terrain. You can use um, the smoothness sliders, same for the for the slope range, to um, to uh, make the blending a little bit better. You can see changes here. So just uh, could use to not make a very hard cut between the uh, between the between the borders 
of which this filter is applied within this height range. Okay, so let's deactivate it again here. So we want to apply this filter all over the terrain. We can do the same for the slope. Just to show you quickly what is going to happen. We have different results for whatever you're using here. So giving you many possibilities to actually um, create whatever kind of terrain you'd like to have. So the next thing here is, are the level strength. As said in the first video, each uh, filter has its own level strength values. Um, you can use to adjust them uh, the strength uh, at a specific detail level. For example, if I'm going to increase, for example, this one, you get several different results of the erosion that you would have. You know, I'll just reduce it as well, giving you completely different nice things you can see it here. Pretty awesome. Okay, so let's keep it back to the original that we had previously. I'm going to try this here. Uh, we need some kind of reset button. Okay. So this is the erosion fluvial filter here. Um, pretty awesome for doing some fluvial erosion stuff. Um, you're not restricted to only one filter. You can also add another filter. So let's combine this filter with the canyon filter for example. Let's see how the difference looks like. Now actually the canyon filter is now applied over the erosion and the erosion is applied over the uh, base shape filter and that, that is what comes out. If you remove the erosion filter then we would only have a canyon style and just to remember this is our original shape, this is with the canyon filter and this is with the erosion filter. So the combination and also the order might change the result as you can see here. It's quite a wise what is going to happen. This is a much more smooth value because the erosion goes over the canyon and smooths of course all those small particles and so on. And if you do it before then you have those smaller parts here that are not eroded. So um, there is a logical combination in how to apply the filters. It depends on what you, what you think it looks better or looks more realistic. Um, there are unlimited, po uh, unlimited possibilities in uh, this kind of way you can do here. So um, now I would like to show you the areas. For this reason I'm going to remove the canyon filter and I'm going to add a new layer and apply into the new layer the new canyon filter that we had previously. So let's drop it in. You see it uh, just creates the same effect than I would have if I added the canyon filter here. So the layer system um, might be only interesting if you are working with the areas, especially with the areas. And I'm going to show you what the, what the difference makes. So let's switch over to the areas tab here. Add an area. And you can see we've added an area here. You can add multiple areas, but only one area can be selected at one time. And you only can operate on one area at one time. More on this in the next video when I'm going to explain the areas in depth. I just will quickly show you what is possible with the areas uh, with, with a respec with the filters or in combination with the filters. The first thing, areas can be moved if you go with the mouse and uh, or drag or hover over the mouse with the, uh, over the area and click the left mouse button. Hold it down, you can move the area. You can scale the, the area, you also can rotate an area. So I will leave it right now. I'm not going to do anything right now anymore here. Just create the area, scale it up, place it into the middle part here. And now I'm going to show you what you can do or how to apply this area to, uh, to a filter. This is done quite easy. You switch over to surface to the filters tab again. You're going to select the layer. I have the canyon filter and I want now that the canyon filter only um, is applied uh, within the bounds of this area. Actually. Um, the red part of this area. This is the blend map. You can see here if I'm disabling the blend map. So the blend map is again same as the heat maps showing which parts of this area which are covered fully red are taken fully into account um, once this area is applied to a layer. Okay so now you can see that we have created an area and there are areas available. World Creator shows us here a combo box where we can click on and select an area. Now we have selected an area and you quickly can see that World Creator uh, um, transforms or, or applies the canyon filter only 
where the area is. I can show this pretty nice if I'm going to increase a little bit the strength of this canyon. You can see a difference. And now let's move over to the area again. Disable the blend map and let's move it. Here we go. Now all, all parts that I'm going all over with the area are being completely transformed by this filter. Now you might assume uh, if you have experience uh, with the painting applications like Photoshop and whatever, um, you might guess there is an edit bl uh, blend map button here and you can edit and paint on the blend map. That's what I'm going to show you quickly. So I am hit the edit blend map here. Um, some tools are shown here like, um, like the paint tool, like the rubber tool and a lot more tools will follow here. And I can select uh, a brush, we have tons of brush here included, for example like this. I can adjust the brush size, the brush rotation. Of course for this kind of brush the rotation doesn't make any sense, but probably for this kind of brush rotation would make sense. And also the strength with which, uh, with which uh, the brush is affecting the, uh, the area here, or the, or the blend map if I'm going to paint. So, if I want to paint, of course now I have selected the paint tool, if I'm going to paint, nothing is going to happen because the area is already completely filled. So I just select the rubber tool and now I'm starting to paint by deleting the parts here on the area. And you can see that I'm transforming it entirely done in real time. Okay, moving closer and do all this stuff pretty well on my own. See here, control, very, very good per pixel, pretty nice. And I think if we reduce a little bit the brush strength, we could also use it to smooth out uh, specific parts here, especially if we increase the brush size a little bit, more easy for us to see, smoothing it out, painting on it, having a nice blend out effect. That's what we get here. So, this is something you can do with the areas actually. Um, and if you scale it up like this, you can see it instantly affects, you can rotate it around. Yeah, of course, uh, you would have to repaint this part here, so it's just an example, I'm not an artist, I'm sorry for this. And you can create multiple areas and apply them to uh, multiple filters, multiple layers, and uh, do magic with them as well. Okay, so that's for it now. There's a lot more about the areas to, to tell, but I think that's enough uh, for now. Um, if, uh, if you're interested, uh, I suggest that you open your World Creator version and check all the filters, what they can do. Combine a few filters, see what they do, play around, especially with the level strength when you try to form biomes using the area capabilities and the blend maps. Because actually what I've done here is some kind of a biome. I have some... Uh, some 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 rough uh, cliffs over here or maybe right this part here so this this could be in the previous biome and you can create multiple biomes combine them all together also there's one more thing about the areas um if you if you don't want to for example you have adjusted one area for a specific region painted on it and adjusted it and and you're actually finished with it and you just want to make sure not to move around the area rotate it again um, just hit here the lock button, so you can't move it anymore. It's not locked to this image, but you, but you still can edit and manipulate the area. Okay, so that's for it now. Thank you for watching, and uh, check out the next video. It's, it's uh, going to explain the areas in depth. Bye bye.